Hello everyone, welcome back to Screen Trends. In today's brand new video, we'll be listing the 6 bars on Bar Rescue that were doomed from the start. As we all know, John Taffer is the Gordon Ramsay of the bar and nightclub business. In each episode of this program, Taffer helps transform a struggling bar into a vibrant, profitable business. Utilizing his expertise as a nightlife consultant who has started, flipped, or owned more than 600 bars and clubs in his career. From the height of the bar stools and the science of the perfect pour, to the effect of the tempo of the music he has on alcohol consumption, Taffer delves into every facet of the business and he does it with a no hold barred style. But there are some bars that are just really doomed from the start and have absolutely no chance to change. At number 1 we have the airliner. An old LA music venue was the lucky winner for this episode and it needed major help. The interior and exterior were falling into disrepair and oddly enough, the owner didn't seem to mind one bit. It's surprising that the owner would even agree on John coming in and working his magic, but at least it happened. It's still open to this day, so John must have sparked some passion in the owner after all. At number 2 we have the O Face Bar. A restaurant is a great place to, for a first job, but when the managers and staff don't care, it can be horrible. This was the case at the O Face Bar as the staff got drunk, started fights with one another, and much much worse. Once John put them to the test, the food wasn't edible, mixing glasses were broken, and a physical fight broke out. The worst part? These people were family! In the end, John decided to walk away for the first time in history and recommended counseling for everyone. Two years later, the owner was arrested on suspicion of abuse, so it's pretty obvious why the O Face Bar is permanently closed now. Out of each other. It's a full blown cat fight. Russell, let's stop this. She's hitting her. At number three, we have the Sandbar. Once a famous Vegas blues bar, Sandbar was an establishment that had fans such as Etta James before closing in the 1970s. Thanks to a passionate guy, this bar got a second chance. Unfortunately, it wasn't doing well, and that's where John came in. He transformed the bar into a place where patrons could get beer-inspired cocktails and named it after the New Mexico zip code. This all seemed fairly normal until the bar owner started being creepy to John's wife. John got wind of it and flipped out. There was a lot of yelling and things nearly got aggressive. Not sequencing this. Now they're screwed, aren't they? So you're all screwed. Good job, Sean. At number four, we have Molly Malone's. Managing the bar was difficult for Bob Isaacson and it wasn't as easy as Cheers made it seem, so he brought in his girlfriend to help him out. It seemed like an easy decision until their relationship became strained. On top of that, his staff didn't respect him and conversations often turned into fights. The worst part? The bar was losing $6,000 a month in revenue, which is never a good sign. Basically, there was no leadership, the bar lacked any sort of identity, and jobs weren't taken seriously. John and his team seemed to help guide the team back to their main objective and gave the bar a makeover and renamed it Waypoint Saloon. Per the f away from me. I will. Right. Yeah. Calm I'm down. She's nowhere near you. Calm down. I have reached a breaking point working here. At number five, we have the Pro's Sports Bar. In this episode, John realized that there was an abundance of managers on site, which wasn't needed. They all seemed to have their own agenda, but the one thing they saw eye to eye on was giving the owner a hard time. It's not a good sign from when the owner can't successfully manage his own staff, and John saw this right away. From their attitude towards the recon, to the constant arguing, it was a painful episode to watch, since the show The Bar is now called BR Steak, and it's still in business. As long as you're on your ass, he fails. As long as you chase people out of here, he fails. And as long as you're a drunk, he fails! At number 6 we have the original hideout. Two brothers owned the original hideout in Tucson, Arizona. Its main issue was that one of the brothers owed $300,000 in debt and couldn't seem to keep up. The overwhelming weight these two brothers had on their shoulders was huge, but it's what some business owners have to endure. The other brother, Raul, couldn't seem to shake the stress and anxiety and literally ran away during filming. It was a sad scene as these brothers were completely in over their heads. That I do disrespect you right now. And I'm willing, I do. And I'm willing to do that. I'm willing so to take that. Say yes, sir. I clean your kitchen. Yeah. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. We really appreciate it. And don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, comment something nice, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.